Welcome. We are set to begin the New Jersey Devils 1988-89 series featuring Jim Schoenfeld, uh, who uh, was a popular coach for the Devils at the time. A little background as to why I chose this particular uh, uh, year and series. Uh, the New Jersey Devils were... Um, playing out of East Rutherford, and I think I skipped him because I'm going in the Hockey DB order, but regardless, we're here. So basically, the New Jersey Devils uh, had just made the playoffs uh, for the first time, and they had made it deep uh, into the third round, I believe. They, um, they were in the final series, and they were very, very close to advancing to the Stanley Cup Finals uh, the year previous to this one. So they have quite a bit of momentum going for them. As you can see here, this is a very good young upstart team. Uh, you've got a 19-year-old Brendan Shanahan. You've got Sean Burke, that's uh, 21. Kirk Muller, uh, Pat Verbeek, John McClain, Bruce Driver, and the list goes on. So a, a lot of good pieces here and a lot of young pieces. I believe the oldest guy on this roster is 30 years old. So there are, there's, there's, there's not many veterans on this team, even though Aaron Braun actually has played a lot of years. Um, he is currently, I believe the, uh, let's take a look. He is the highest um, point total uh, all time for the New Jersey Devils. So with that being said, as you can see here, they had a really nice season last year. And they're looking to sustain that. And they weren't really able to. Uh, Jim Schoenfeld ended up getting um, fired eventually in the next season or two. And um, although it did turn out uh, in their best interest as they went on to become one of the most dominant 90s and early thousands um, teams of, of all time. This was one of the most brutal teams to play against, especially the dead puck era. Um, Jacques Lemaire, Lou Lamorello, um, they uh, they had this team going. So uh, not, nothing would really get past their defense with Scott Stevens and Rob Niedermeyer, Ken Danico, and obviously Marty Broder, who was a, a massive, massive piece of uh, what they were doing here. So they did go on to win a couple Stanley Cups. Um, it's hard to say what exactly the goal uh, is. It's obviously includes Stanley Cups. But how many in what time span? Um, I feel like uh, if we could grab a couple, um, maybe one before when they originally got their cup in 95, uh, we'll see how it goes. But I'm just interested to see what this group uh, can do because this group never really stuck together. Uh, Brendan Shanahan went, went out to, uh, I believe, St. Louis after. Um, yeah, in 91, he was already in St. Louis. Um, and there's a few other pieces there. Uh, Pat Verbeek, I believe, uh, would go on eventually to where? To, to Hartford in 89. And uh, Kirk Muller would also go his way to, uh, to Montreal. So this team never stuck together. Uh, probably for the best, to be honest, because it led to that success that I had just mentioned. Um, so with that being said, uh, we are actually on uh, FHM9. I, I did not uh, mention that at the start, but we are back on FHM9. So looking forward to um, playing this version, this um, one that's actually received two patches since I was um, uh, concerned about a couple glitches that they had. So with that being said, um, that, there's our roster. And we uh, generally what we do is we, we would take a look at uh, free agents. And the one that sticks out is Curtis Joseph. So Curtis Joseph uh, is, a, is a good young goalie with some decent potential. And we have a bunch of goalies uh, with similar potential, if not more. So, But I feel like he is a difference maker, a bigger difference maker than any of the other players that are available. Uh, there are a couple of decent uh, prospects over here couple of which that are actually ours uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go offer a deal to Curtis Joseph um, because there is a lot of expansion going on in the next 
a little bit. There's a ex huge exp expansion window coming up. I believe there's three or four years of expansion. So, yeah, there's uh, there's going to be a lot going on for losing players, and uh, we have to make sure that we have depth in all positions because, you know, um, it looks like that our team will be ripe for the taking as we have a decent amount of guys with some good potential. So uh, we'll see how that goes. With that being said, uh, let's see how the offseason goes. All right, so good news. Curtis Joseph is a New Jersey Devil now. So we'll have quite the we've quite the depth now in, in, the, in goal. Uh, we've got a 21-year-old Sean Burke with four-star potential. We have a 21-year-old uh, a Craig Billington who has three-and-a-half-star potential. And Curtis Joseph, who's also 21. So our, all three of our goalies are 21 years old. And then we have some decent uh, backups here, options here. Bob Sauvé, who's played... A, uh, a few games in the NHL, a lot of games in the NHL, and Chris Terry, who definitely um, carved himself a nice career in the NHL as a mostly a career backup uh, behind uh, Marty Broder. But um, yeah, defense or sorry, goaltending depth is uh, not an issue at this time. We could use a couple more right wingers, um, but I think maybe, hopefully, a couple of these left wingers will uh, will make their way to the right wing. But other than that, let's get to. Uh, well, we'll go right through the preseason, and we'll see what our roster looks like. All right, so at the end of training camp, this is what our um, roster looks like. So a couple, a couple surprises. So Curtis Joseph uh, has made the team. Craig Billington uh, did not play too well, so and he went down in potential as well. So he is, um, he's taken. Uh, uh, the farm route. Uh, Jack O'Callaghan uh, was sent down in favor of Randy Valischek. Uh, Weinrich did not have a good training camp. Uh, David Malley didn't have a strong training camp. It was just a numbers game. Somebody had to go. Uh, Andrews Carlson. Uh, Yanni o Oyanin, Oyanin uh, had a pretty good uh, camp, uh, but uh, we are we only have 22 guys on the roster because we anticipate somebody uh, adding somebody off of the waiver uh, wire most likely a centerman or a right winger. So with that being said, let's get going to the submission lists. All right, so uh, even Salve is getting um, protected. Uh, and Chris Terry, because the, the other three goalies are exempt, so funny enough, but unfortunately that won't be the case when the expansion drafts roll around, but Terreri and Salve both uh, were keeping them around. Other than that, I think this is pretty straightforward here. Uh, two guys, Carlson is, is open. Let me take a look at Carlson. Yeah, we're okay with losing him. As well as McPhee, yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, we're good to go. So yeah, we're most likely going to be looking for a, um, for a sentiment or a right winger. So Calgary leads the way for favorites. And um, the Oilers in Montreal are also there, so it's all Canadian teams. Uh, pretty good goalies here at the top here. Kesey and Poop are both available. And both are gone. Let me filter out. Let's just stick to center mid and right wingers. Alright, so we have Yarvi. Eero, Yarvi. Um, despite being a two rating, I don't think there's not much there. Paul, Yig. Stu Kulak. Okay. Steve Ludzi. Ludzi, de decent, decent uh, defense. Uh, Ray, New Ray Newfield, uh, Doug Wickenheiser. No, and we got uh, Boudreau here, Alan Boudreau. Not great either. <laughs> and then we already have Carlson. Um, Rich. Okay, let's take a look at the. Let's go deeper dive here. Busek, and we got any shooters here? Fitzpatrick's a pretty good shooter. Ross Fitzpatrick. Uh, 
skater. Any good skaters? I guess uh, Carlson was one. Eves has pretty good hockey sense. Defense. Kulak. Hmm. Tough to find one, to be honest. I wonder if we'll just pick up another left winger and maybe one of them will switch over eventually, see if there's anybody sticking out. We've got Don Barber. Rents, Barry, let's see on the info here, Allison, no, hmm. that's slim pickings when it comes to forwards, that's for sure, I do see Stim Stu Grimson though. Be an interesting addition. A young Stu Grimson. Sure. Let's go with the Enforcer. I did not check if any of our guys were picked up. Does not look like it. Okay. So let's take a look at our roster here. Shani turns to 14, so we've got uh, <laughs> we got a bunch of left wingers, and we'll see how that plays out. Uh, yeah, so we'll uh, we'll see how the start of the season goes. All right, so not a good start for us. Two and seven, that's uh, less than ideal. So the game ratings, yeah, they show that uh, something is not going great. So we're gonna make some changes here. Isabert's going down. Stu Grimson as well. Uh, we're gonna put some guys on the tree block. We'll put uh, Sorella and Rooney. And Malishek. Honaker. Who else can we put on the trade block? Yeah, sure, let's put all these guys on. Alright, and uh, let's see, yeah, we have yeah, Shani's been pretty good, so let's see what we what kind of reinforcements we can call up, if any actually. I'll I'll let this play out and see how it happen uh, how it goes down. And uh, Hopefully we can uh, improve upon our first month. So I do have an interesting trade offer here, Joe Sorella for Keith Carney. I mean, Keith Carney, it's a little bit concerning. He's only a two potential. Uh, ideally, you'd want to get more. Um, it's a tough call here because Joe Sorella is not off to a good start, but I think I'm going to pass on this deal. All right, so a bit of an update here. It's uh, we've gotten within three uh, yeah, games uh, to get to 500, uh, so not not too bad of a turnaround. Uh, I did not check goaltending previously. And Curtis Joseph is struggling a little bit, so I'm going to make that swap uh, for uh, Craig Billington. Craig Billington or Chris Terreri. I'm gonna go with Craig Billington. All right, that's a change that we made and. Also, Valashek is uh, struggling a bit. Um, uh, although, I mean, he just doesn't play a lot, but he's got four points in eight games, so um, we'll see if we could get any offers for him, any good offers, and we'll, we'll pull the pull the trigger. But uh, as of right now, he is definitely on the hot seat, and definitely possible that he could uh, be the next. Uh, uh, he could be out of here pretty soon. Um, in the meantime, I might call up Jack uh, O'Callaghan so they could battle it out. 
that's what we'll do for now. Alright, see you in January. Alright, so I think I'm going to pull the trigger on my first trade, Steve Rooney, who uh, has a 57 rating, left winger. Uh, I think I'm going to deal him to Minnesota for uh, Tom Martin, who's uh, an aggressive uh, player who can pass the puck around so and a little bit younger. So I'm going to do that just to shake up the locker room a little bit and see how that goes. About to make another deal. Uh, so Randy Valashek is still struggling with uh, 55 uh, game rating. Um, he's just not working out. Jack O'Callaghan also, uh, now that I see, is not doing too well. Uh, I'm going to put him on the trade block. And I'm actually going to throw Martin on the block as well. Even though he's better but than the other guy slightly. Uh, Greg Wolanin I'm actually going to pull off. The trade block because um, we have a bunch of guys here that we would like to get rid of first um, for Bob Beers who is uh, pretty young to potential um, still has a ways to go but I'll take that deal and I could send down beers for now so I'm gonna make that deal and then Bob Beers to the miners for now So we're at the new year and it's not looking good. 12 and 21. Conference wise, we are actually, um, even though it's essentially it's much easier to make the playoffs in this uh, day and age in the NHL, we're still seven points behind out of a playoff spot behind our rivals in the Rangers. So we definitely have to figure something out here because it's just not going too well for us. Um, I'm going to make a couple adjustments here right now. Draco Callan's not playing well. Uh, the Martin experience, uh, uh, experience has not been well. And Pat Conacher as well uh, has not been great for us. So I'm going to make these changes right now. They're going to be put on waivers. And if we get something back, that's great. If not, then so be it. Uh, that leaves us with... I need to call up two forwards. Yeah, just two forwards. So let's see who we could bring up here. Let's see who could bring up. Let's go with uh, Yanni played well for us previously. And Paul Eisenberg, I believe, played a little bit with us already. I'll go with uh, Kevin Todd. No. And there's Carlson. We'll give Carlson a shot. That's what we'll do. And FYI, Jack O'Callaghan was put on waivers. And claimed on waivers uh, by the uh, New York Islanders. So now we're at the start of February and we might just be better off tearing this down. Um, not looking uh, too great. We're fourth bottom. Maybe it's meant to be. Maybe we get another good player. But yeah, we are much, much off the pace when it comes to a playoff spot. Uh, over 10 points behind the Rangers so uh, the playoffs do not look very likely at this time maybe we can make some moves at the trade deadline and uh, we actually haven't taken a look at the scoring summary yet so here it is um, we have Kirk Muller leading the way with Verbeek and McLean uh, not far behind uh, Brendan Shanahan surprisingly um, might be uh, well then again, if you look where he's on the depth chart, you know, he's he's not in a primary top six role right now. So that's definitely um, one of the main reasons why. But I think he's still on pace to have more points than last year, although he only played 65 last year. So that's the main reason. So I'm not worried about Brendan Shanahan at all. I uh, would love to see him with more points, but we definitely understand that we are uh, trusting the process uh, because he does have, have a few guys ahead of him. So... Um, There'll be a couple more guys. I'm going to actually put jo Mark Johnson on the trade block. And possibly, uh, who else? Patrick Sundstrom. Uh, any other older guys? So I think, I think we're going to do a f full flip of a rebuild here. 
and uh, see if we get any offers. Because we're not, I'm not gonna give these guys away for free. But if we can get something for them, I will certainly consider that. Patty Sundstrom, I think we'll draw the line right here. Keeping these guys driver curvers. That's what we'll roll with. See if we'll get any offers. All right, folks, I almost fell off my chair when I saw, not this offer, I'm actually gonna make this deal. So we're gonna get Mark Johnson out of the building to make room for Brendan Shanahan to move up. And uh, Shane Trill is a decent uh, enforcer, tough guy, we'll see what happens there. I'm gonna accept that. And this isn't it either, but I'm gonna also make this trade. I, uh, Kevin McClellan, decent ratings, good defensively for Jim Korn, who just hasn't worked out for us defensively. This is the offer. I've never seen anything this lopsided before. However, deals like this have happened in the past. And uh, there's no rule against saying no to what a computer has offered me. So I'm absolutely going to take this. Yes, it's Timu Solani, who has yet to play an NHL game, playing uh, in the AHL and playing very well for Pat Conacher. I kid you not. Pat Conacher, who is uh, currently also in our Meyer Leagues. You betcha, I'm going to complete that trade. These are the breaks that you wait for in a game like this. With my restrictions, you can't go out and you can't add anybody, but some of these offers that come by, and yes, this is normal offers. This is not uneasy. Um, I don't know, where, where does it say that? Here, where can I prove that? Where are we here? Normal. Normal difficulty, so if that even changes anything, I'm not sure if that changes uh, who you get offered, but regardless, um, Team Solani is now a member of the <laughs> Winnipeg or above of the New Jersey, New Jersey Devils. Just Winnipeg just wrapped up a gift for us, and uh, here you go. So I'm actually gonna let Team Solani. Finish the rest of the season, I think, down in the in the minors, and um, we'll let that play out accordingly. So, yeah, not a bad trade in line, but we do have to add a couple guys. Let's see here. So we need to add a defenseman. Let's go with uh, Eric Weinrich. Get him going. I think I'm good for forwards. I think so. However, what is concerning is that uh, my job security is very, very low. So that's obviously not good. I definitely want to see um, see kind of how Timo Solani ends up here. So I am uh, likely to click the cannot get fired. Um, button because yeah this a little little too soon to get fired i think so i just want to save my be honest and save save my save my bum a little bit here because um yeah i would just uh because at this point we are tanking on purpose so to get the best pick possible for next year so i am gonna i am gonna choose that option with that being said, I'm a pretty bad tanker as we are back in the playoff mix with uh, uh, 12 or so games to go. Um, so we'll see what happens there because we're definitely not eliminated yet. With that being said, um, I might actually call up Timo Solani. And kind of just see what happens. So I, I, I called up Timo Solani, but he did not get into any games. And uh, now we're 10 points out with only a couple games left. So uh, I did make the call to uh, to send him down again because uh, we are eliminated now from the playoffs officially. So no playoffs for us, despite a interesting push near the end. And I think that's just an 80-game season. So let's take a quick look here at how it ended for us. So we ended up with the uh, the fourth worst record, and 
Uh, let's see here. And a ways away, so looks like the Rangers went on a decent run there at the end, I think. Um, let's take a look at uh, the scoring summary. Contracts, there we go. So Kirk Muller was 72, Verbeek, McLean, not too far behind. Uh, Curvers and Driver led the way there. Shanahan definitely uh, uh, benefited there from um, from the opening there on the left wing. And yeah, goaltending. Uh, Billington was okay for a backup, and uh, Sean Burke w was, uh, I mean, not, not great, but ratings-wise, they're okay. Um, Team Solani. We got Team Solani, so... Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, we can pair up Solani with Shanahan going forward and who we could pick up in this draft. I'm not sure who's in this draft, but I'm very curious to find out. So we have our lovely image glitches here. Uh, but the Pittsburgh Penguins are the 1989 Stanley Cup champions, so they have arrived early. Uh, let's take a closer look at uh, the tree. So it ended up being, um, this was, in reality, this was Calgary's year. Uh, they made it all the way to the semi. They lost against Chicago. Uh, Chicago, pretty darn good team. Uh, they were very competitive at this time. But, yeah, Marilyn Mew and company. Paul with Paul Coffey. Uh, yeah, so no Yager here. Um, so Coffey and Lemieux, along with uh, Bob Airy and... Uh, this is Dan Quinn, yeah, Dan Quinn, 134 points. I don't think Dan Quinn ever got 134 points in real life. He was very good. He got up pretty good, yeah. Yeah, he had a heck of a career. 94 points in 89, so yeah. Um, 134 though, holy smokes. Unreal amount of points for these guys. Bob Airy, Quinn, wow. Unreal. Cunnyworth. Was Cunnyworth acquired somehow? I'm going to take a quick look here. No, he was uh, he was part of that team. Interesting. So yeah, uh, Mary Lemieux, Paul Coffey, that combo. Dominant, as you can see. So let's take a look at... Uh, oh, the Oilers got ousted in seven by the Flames. Interesting. Montreal made it to the to the uh, to the final four. Pretty good team here. So yeah, we've got our New Jersey team has a lot of ways to go, but the pieces are coming together. If we keep getting those offers, that would be fantastic. All right, welcome to the 1989 off season. So we have, uh, this is our roster right now. Uh, a lot of red, so a lot of RFAs we might bring back. Maybe not. Uh, as for free agency, uh, there is one player here as a two-star player, zooming in. Uh, I'm gonna go grab him, actually. I'm not sure about the no trade clause. Maybe we'll just give him a couple extra dough. Let's see if he's okay with that, perfect. And I'm curious to see about this draft announcement. I th think, no, there's no, there's no lottery. I don't think there's a lottery. So let's, uh, let's see what happens here. Okay, there's no lottery here, but we do have an offer here. Uh, Kevin Shell, day off. Well, that's, uh, that's the Jets, the Jets uh, GM, but not a good offer. All right. Let's get to that draft, though. And before that, let's see how our... Yeah, we're still active there. Perfect. Rookie draft. So, um, Nicholas Lidstrom's the prize here. And a bunch of goalies. And some guys who are much, much, uh, much underrated here. So it's Lidstrom, Garen, and Wait right off the bat. Goaltending, we're not going to go after a goaltender here. 
So we got Matt Sandin would be the uh, the easy choice here, I would say. Already decent ability. Uh, Adam Foote's a good option too, but Matt Sandin is um, tough to find those guys. And I think we could use that too because I'm not very confident. It's, yeah, after Kirk Muller, it's... Um, you know we're we're trying we're shopping Sundstrom, Lowell, he's RFA, so Sundin would be uh, a perfect choice here. So I think we're gonna go with Sundin. It's easy to find defensemen, even though Adam Foot's very good. Um, it's just simply uh, easier to find him. Sundin, tough, tough to find a guy like Matt Sundin. So Matt Sundin, welcome to New Jersey. All right. Now we got some, uh, yeah, so now we're actually pretty thin on left wing all of a sudden, so uh, these are definitely options here. Uh, uh, Scott Pellerin's already a one-star guy. Let's take a closer look at him, yeah, but not, not too great. Uh, Brian Savage, Rob Zaminer, Zaminer, pretty good defensively already. I like that. Savage, yeah, a lot of yellow there. I'm gonna go with Zaminer here. I think I'm gonna go with Zaminer, yeah. Yeah, let's go with Zaminer. All right. Laukinen sticks out a bit for me here. And that's what I think I'm gonna go with. Yagi Laukinen, good defense already. Blair Atchman still still out there. Uh, Jason Morley's decent. Uh, Scott McGrady, interesting player. James Black. Uh, it's an interesting decision here to make. Shane Stevenson. Herder, Jim Matheson, Mark Greig. Interesting choices here to make. Let's take another look at Blair. Predicted him to go 124. What? Weird. Where have they predicted? Oh, oh, so 40, 41 for Jason Lilly. Interesting. I think we could see that somewhere here. Uh, is there a projected? Uh, no, there's no projected here. Draft info, biography, draft info. Where did they pick that? Not too bad. Bet we can't see him. Everything in the filter does not look like it. All right, Blair Ashman, yeah, interesting. Jason Willie could be interesting, and then there was a few other guys here. Scott McGree is definitely interesting. He's already 20. And Blair Atchman is also already 20. Uh, these guys are all, for the most part, a little bit all over age, a little bit clam, popsed. Interesting. I don't know. I'm going to go with Jason Woolley. I'm not sure why it keeps pulling me towards Jason Woolley, but I'm going to do it. We got here. McGrady's still out there. Per Gustafson. Ken Sutton. I'll go with James Black. I think. Yeah, let's do it. Who 
else we have here? Pops. Like, I'll go with McGrady finally, sure. He keeps popping up here. Don't think there's any one of the best star building guys there is, actually. I'll roll the dice on this defenseman. Then I'll roll the dice on one of these guys here. Oops. Never mind. That's a wrap on the draft. I'm not sure why. Oh, I see why. Not our pick yet. Now it's our pick. Wanted to jump the gun a bit. Alright, Heinz 2. I'll take Pops, I guess. Give me something here. Sure. Feel humor. And then let's go with Jim Montgomery. Is that a wrap? I think that's a wrap. So let's get to the next day here and uh, take a look at what we got. Oh, we got a trade offer. Where is that trade offer? Peter Dury. Uh, no, I'm good, thanks. Review, yeah, so we had a pretty good draft. The, uh, the, uh, the pundits have us first, the media observers. So let's take a look at our depth chart here. So Matt Sundin, we, we're loading up here on it on some uh, decent prospects here, so. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how the off season goes. All right, so I did realize that I jumped the gun a bit, but we didn't have the playoffs, so I had to fill up this video a little bit. So I did get into the off season, into the draft, obviously. We haven't taken a look at Rymo, so Rymo, uh, yeah, decent, decent stuff. We just need a little depth there. We wanted somebody, and. He's a two-star guy and uh, could be some decent depth because we don't have too much confidence. Although Paul Eisenberg could be better for us, I think. And Rob Zamner, who knows what he can do uh, out of camp. But, but yeah, we cleaned up our team a bit. We, uh, we lapsed a bunch of rights. Um, so we have a group here of defensemen and we got some good young guys here that uh, will hopefully challenge them eventually. Uh, probably not yet, but... Um, definitely some guys here uh, goaltending is we've got lots of options in that I uh, will wonder what kind of Curtis Joseph we'll get this year still has yet to win a game in the NHL uh, and Chris Terry is uh, showing some decent potential as well as a backup and uh, and so forth so Brendan Shanahan does have that left wing locked up um, and then Matt Sundin will hopefully be climbing the uh, the, uh, the, the depth chart pretty soon he'll pass Claude fairly shortly and Patrick I mean Patrick's on the trade block so we'll see how we can move, move him Timo Solani same thing although he's got stiffer competition here as these guys are three and a half star guys while Timo's still one and a half star Timo actually went down one potential uh, star which is a little bit concerning I wonder if that's something to do with his stay in the minors but uh, hopefully he can get that back uh, he is our top prospect as you can see so we are adding some guys we added Sandin and Timu Solani in this video, so can't complain too much about that. I think we're heading in the right direction. I did definitely did have to press the cannot be fired button because my rating was in the 20s. Yeah, 20s. So I'm not 100% sure when you get fired, but I'm pretty sure if it's under 50, there's a chance you get fired. So I definitely had to activate that because I definitely want to see where this goes. Um, yeah, it was an awful season, but... Yeah, I think uh, I think this next season and beyond should be better. I don't foresee us missing the playoffs this upcoming year. I might turn off the cannot be fired one going uh, button going forward because um, you know the pressure will be on moving forward. Although this team did take a step back from their from being so close to the Stanley Cup Finals to missing the playoffs altogether. So I'm here to to crack that. Uh, riddle and see if we can figure this out with that being said uh we are just here at the end of july here and um training camp will be coming up and that's where we'll pick up the next season so 
we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you again soon.